हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर योगेश आई वेलकम यू टू दिस न्यू सेशन इन दिस लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन जेनेटिक्स एंड मॉलिकुलर बायोलॉजी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ न्यू कॉम्पिटेंसी दैट इज बी आई सेवन पॉइंट फोर अंडर विच वी आर गोइंग टू कंसिडर रिकॉम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी रिलेटेड टेक्निक्स एंड मॉलिकुलर डायग्नोस्टिक्स एज वेल एज डी एन ए लाइब्रेरी इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट रिकॉम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी सो वॉट इज रिकॉम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी Recombinant DNA technology is a genetic engineering which affects artificial modification of genetic constitution of a living cell by introducing a foreign DNA through experimental techniques so this is the definition of recombinant DNA technology it is genetic engineering which modifies genetic constitutions of a living cell artificially by introducing foreign DNA through experimental techniques and the techniques which are involved in recombinant dna technology are the splicing of dna by restriction endonucleases preparation of chimeric dna molecule followed by cloning for the production of large number of identical target dna molecules these are the techniques which are involved in recombinant dna technology coming to the tools of recombinant dna technology there are various biological tools which are used to bring about genetic manipulations and these are mainly enzymes there are passenger dnas these are the insert dna fragments which is passively transferred from one cell to another so these are the foreign dna or passenger dna and there is a vector dna or a vehicle dna which acts as a carrier of the foreign dna okay so these are the three important tools of recombinant dna technology so we'll discuss about these tools of recombinant dna technology one by one so coming to the enzymes which are used as a tool of recombinant dna technology there are various enzymes which may be required to be used are restriction endonucleases reverse transcriptases dna polymerases there are dna ligases also s1 nucleases bal s1 nucleases and alkaline phosphatases this restriction endonucleases are used to cut dna chains at specific locations so that's why they are called as chemical knife because they cut the dna at the specific locations and they are very specific in their activity then there is reverse transcriptase which synthesizes dna from the rna template and thereby it synthesizes dna from mrna there are dna polymerases we know the function they synthesize uh, double stranded dna from single stranded dna they synthesize double stranded complementary dna as well and a nick translation there are dna ligases also t4 ligase it catalyzes bonds between dna molecules and joins the dna molecules if there are any uh, nicks in the dna uh, sequence then there is s1 nuclease which degrade single stranded dna they remove the hairpin in synthesis of complementary dna there is bal s1 nuclease which degrades both 3 prime and 5 prime end of the dna causes a progressive shortening of dna molecule and lastly there is alkaline phosphatase which dephosphorylates 5 prime ends of rna and dna and thereby they remove 5 prime phosphate groups prior to kinase labeling to prevent self ligation of the dna fragments so these are the enzymes which may be required to be used in recombinant dna technology in various techniques okay so coming to the first variety that is restriction endonucleases which are also called as molecular seizures so coming to the history and the research aspect on uh, restriction endonucleases Werner Arbor showed that certain enzymes of bacteria they restrict the growth of bacterial phages in host bacteria hence the name of restriction endonucleases is given to this kind of uh, enzymes okay because they restrict the growth of bacterial phages in certain bacteria so werner arbor uh, has discovered that then hamilton smith in 1970 isolated the first restriction enzyme and which was that it was beta hind 1 beta hind 1 was the first restriction enzyme isolated and that was isolated by hamilton smith daniel nathans in 1971 for the first time applied the enzyme to cut the dna though they were identified but they were not used to cut the dna but daniel nathans in 1971 used the enzyme for the first time to cut the dna molecule 
and all of these three scientists got nobel prize in 1978 for their work on restriction endonucleases and in late 1980 paul berg developed the cutting technique for recombinant dna so finally all this research have evolved to present state of uh, recombinant dna technology coming to the nomenclature of restriction enzymes we name restriction enzyme like this eco r1 eco r2 which are isolated from escherichia e. coli then bam h1 this is the restriction endonuclease obtained from bacillus amyloliquefaciens so what is the nomenclature what is the protocol of a uh, nomenclature of uh, restriction enzyme so the first three letters of the restriction enzyme name consist of first letter of the restriction enzyme indicates the genus of the organism first two letters of the species that is co and followed by the strain designation the strain of the organism is designated here is r so r strain of escherichia coli and the roman numeral 1 or 2 or 3 may be to indicate the order of the discovery of the restriction en- endonuclease enzyme so eco r1 indicates that it is isolated from escherichia coli and from the r strain of escherichia coli and this is the first enzyme to be discovered so this was regarding the nomenclature of restriction endonucleases coming to restriction sites first restriction endonucleases recognize the specific sequence and the specific sequences which are recognized by restriction endonucleases are palindromic sequences these are inverted repeat sequences the nucleotide sequence in 5 prime to 3 prime direction is the same in both strands if we consider this example in this diagram that uh, in the dna strand from 5 prime to 3 prime end the sequence is a a t t the same sequence in 3 prime to 5 prime end is t t a a so that is the inverted sequence and the sequence is same in 5 prime to 3 prime direction so in this in this strand 5 prime to 3 prime is a a t t and in the in the another strand it is 5 prime to 3 prime same sequence you will find it here a a t t a a t t so these are the palindromic sequences and these are the sites of action of restriction endonucleases so these are the restriction sites the resultant dna cuts will generally have overlapping or sticky ends so once the action of restriction endonucleases occur on a dna strand it either cuts into a blunt end or a sticky end if we consider the example here given in diagram you see that rsa1 has cut this dna molecule into blunt ends there is no overhang and there are no sticky ends that that is called as blunt end then in the next example you will see that there are sticky five prime ends so that is cut by eco r1 so eco r1 cuts dna molecule with five prime sticky ends which has five prime overhangs then coming to the next example of cutting dna molecule with sticky 3 prime end that, that is by kpn1 here you will see that uh, dna is cut into fragments in such a way that there are three prime overhangs so three prime sticky ends are there coming to the restriction fragments the recognition site will be about 4 to 7 nucleotide base pairs and if a piece of dna from a species is made to react with a specific restriction endonuclease a characteristic array of cut pieces will be produced and those characteristic array of cut pieces are called as restriction fragments so the fragments after the action of restriction endonucleases are called as restriction fragments and the same piece of dna may be cut with a different enzyme to produce a different set of restriction fragments so we can use a variety of restriction endonucleases one after the other so as to find out so as to get a specific sequence which we want what is the restriction map when this rest- mixture of restriction fragment is run in electrophoresis the electrophoretic separation of overlapping fragments is called as restriction map it can be created by running restriction fragments in electrophoresis okay and the study of restriction map using suitable probes of short tandem repeats help in developing 
or DNA fingerprint, which is characteristic of each individual or organism. So this short tandem repeats of a particular individual when run in electrophoresis. So as to get the restriction map, that restriction map is going to be unique for that particular individual because the short tandem repeats are unique in each individual. Then have a look at this table. There are enzymes, the sequ specific sequence of recognition site and there are the microbial origin is also given for that particular enzyme. So TAC1, RSA1, SAU3A1, then ECOR1. So the sequences are given and the way they do the cut is also indicated here. So blunt end is a feature of RSA1 and rest of this TAC1, SAU3A1, ECOR1 and BAMH1. Those are cutting the DNA with 5 prime sticky ends because they'll have 5 prime overhangs. Here also HIN3, then CLA1. BSSH2 then NOT1 these will also cleave or cut the DNA molecule with 5' prime overhangs. The only exception here is KPN1. In this case the KPN1 cuts the DNA molecule with 3' prime overhangs. So this is the exception which may be asked in MCQ. Then after we have discussed enzymes we will come to passenger DNA the DNA insert to be introduced into the vector DNA that is the passenger DNA that may be complemented DNA that can also be synthetic DNA and may be a random DNA. Then let us consider this passenger DNA one by one. So coming to complementary DNA. Synthesis of complementary DNA by reverse transcriptase enzyme has been explained in detail under reverse transcription okay so the session on reverse transcription has included this the synthesis of complementary dna by using reverse transcriptase enzyme so you'll find the link in suggestion card you go to that video and watch synthesis of complementary dna by using reverse transcriptase so i'm going to skip these slides here because that will be a duplication of the content then coming to synthesis of synthetic DNA. This synthetic DNA can be produced purely by chemical means. Just by manipulating the sequence you can produce a synthetic DNA. Short segments 10 to 15 nucleotides with sticky ends can be generated chemically with the enzyme bacteriophage T4 DNA ligase. So this T4 DNA ligase without the agency of DNA polymerase can also synthesize 10 to 15 nucleotides sequences synthetically. And these are connected with sticky ends to give a synthetic DNA. So maybe if our requirement is only 10 to 15 nucleotides, then we can use T4 DNA ligase also to produce synthetic DNA of our desired sequence. Then coming to random DNA, if it is not possible to use complementary DNA or synthetic DNA, a shotgun experiment is carried out to produce uh, random pieces, random pieces of DNA, uh, which is called as uh, insert DNA and uh, using the enzyme restriction and nucleases. So randomly this can be used and after electrophoresis we can identify that random DNA sequence incorporate into vector and into the host cell later on. So this was regarding passenger DNA and after passenger DNA we will discuss about the vector DNA. The vector or vehicle DNA has following types which may be used as a vector or vehicle DNA. These can be bacterial plasmids, may be bacteriophages or cosmids. Okay, so we'll discuss these plasmids, bacteriophages, and uh, cosmids one by one. Coming to bacterial plasmids, these are small circular duplex DNA molecules, and their natural function is to confer the antibiotic resistance to the host cells. And the plasmic DNAs uh, replicate independently. They can be easily separated from the host bacteria. The DNA sequence and the restriction maps of many plasmids are known. Hence, the precise location of restriction enzyme cleavage sites for inserting the foreign DNA is available. So, the restriction maps are very important. 
The plasmids are the most commonly used vectors and can accept short DNA pieces about 6 to 10 kilobase pair long. Okay, so these are the two MCQs which may be asked what is, what is the most commonly used vector that is the bacterial plasmid and what is the sequence, what is the length of the sequence which can be uh, incorporated by bacterial plasmid. So it is that it is that 6 to 10 kilobase pair length of short DNA piece which can be accepted by bacterial plasmid to incorporate into, into the host cell genome. Coming to types of plasmids, uh, there are mainly three types of uh, plasmids uh, have been studied but uh, many have been found in a variety strains of uh, E. coli. Coming to the first type that is F plasmid or sex plasmid, here the plasmid transfers a replica of the plasmid from donor cell that is F plus to recipient F minus cell without the F plus cell losing its plasmids. Because the replica of the plasmid is transferred, there is no loss of plasmid sequence from the donor cell. F plasmid DNA can integrate into chromosome of the recipient cell to produce HFR cell. When a, an imperfect excision of F occurs, it produces a plasmid containing a chromosomal gene. This is called as F plasmid. Then coming to R plasmid, that is drug resistance plasmid. These plasmids carry genes conferring resistance to one or more antibiotics and usually can transfer this resistance to resistance free recipient cell. Then coming to call plasmids or collicinogenic factor plasmids. They carry genes for the synthesis of protein known as collicins. That's why they are call it, called as collicinogenic factor plasmids. These proteins can kill related strains of the bacteria that lack the call plasmid. The call plasmids are non-self transmissible. They can prepare their DNA for transfer but do not have the genes necessary for determining effective contact between donor and recipient cells. That's why these call plasmids are non-self transmissible. Coming to Ent plasmid. Plasmids called ent are responsible for traveler's diarrhea and some types of dysentery because of the production of enterotoxin by these plasmids. These are called as ent plasmids. These enterotoxins are the intestinal irritants. So this was regarding bacterial plasmids. Coming to bacteriophages. These bacteriophages usually have linear DNA molecule into which the foreign DNA can be inserted at several restriction enzyme sites. The chimeric or hybrid DNA is collected after the phage proceeds through its lytic cycle and produces mature and infective phage particles. After the activity of restriction endonucleases on linear DNA molecular bacteriophages, chimeric or hybrid DNA which is synthesized inside the phage will be released and there will be a lytic cycle of the bacteriophage. The major advantage of the phage vector is that they can accept even a larger molecule than the bacterial plasmid. So bacterial plasmid was 6 to 10. Now here in bacteriophages we can transfer a somewhat larger DNA fragment of 10 to 20 kilobase pair length. Then coming to cosmids. What are cosmids? These are specialized plasmids that contain DNA sequences so called as cos sites required for packaging lambda DNA into the phage particle and larger fragments of DNA can be inserted in cosmids which combine the best features of plasmid and phages. Because cosmids combine best features of plasmids and phages, cosmids can accept very large DNA fragments, maybe 35 to 50 kilobase pairs. Please refer to these references for further studies. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel for notifications about upcoming videos in future.